ahead and um, tell you a little bit more about the panelists who are joining us today. Um, we're going to do introductions in just a moment here. Um, before we begin with that, though, just wanted to welcome everyone uh, to the Duke's Decide panel about major and career decision making. We have current students and alumna, advisors, and an employer here to speak about the decision making process and their experiences with major and career decisions. This program is a joint effort of two departments, University Advising and the University Career Center, as part of the Family Fridays events. We have a wonderful panel joining us here today. I want to thank each of our panelists who are joining us. They each have some really unique experiences and perspectives that should be really informative. You can see our panelists here on the slide and they are going to introduce themselves um, and I'll go ahead and begin. My name is Chandra Lane. I use she, her pronouns and I'll be moderating our panel today. I serve as the Associate Director for Outreach and Engagement here in the JMU Career Center. And as we're talking about majors, I was an English major in undergrad, followed by a counseling psychology graduate program, which definitely shows that our paths can change over time. I'm now going to ask the panelists to introduce themselves in the order that they're listed here. So Chris, that means you're next. Thank you, Chandra. I'm Chris Campbell. I work in university advising. I use he, him pronouns. And my major in college as an undergrad was political science. And I continued on to graduate school for higher education administration. And I've also been at JMU since um, 2004. Hey, good evening, everyone. My name is Mark Lloyd. Uh, I use he, him pronouns. And uh, I am currently the Senior Manager of Talent Acquisition for the CFA Institute uh, based out of Charlottesville, Virginia. I uh, have a background, well, my major in college was Peace, War, and Defense. Uh, and then I got into, I was in ROTC and went into the military, uh, talk about changing directions. Now I'm in recruiting, having done also a stint in career advising for counseling and employer relations at higher ed. So I've got quite a, quite a broad bandwidth of experience. Happy to be here. Hey everyone, I'm Spencer. I am a senior December grad, so I'll be graduating in about a month. Uh, I use he, him pronouns. I have a double major in history and media arts and design. Uh, and I have two minors as well. I'm in the honors college and I have a second minor in African, African American and diaspora studies. Uh, so I kind of got the experience of bouncing around from different departments and uh, sampling a little bit of everything. So I can speak to that. Um, hello everyone, I'm Elizabeth Rapp. I'm a junior interdisciplinary liberal studies major um, with minors in elementary education, Spanish, and honors. Um, and I work under university advising as a Madison advising peer. Hello, my name is Kara Medrano. Um, I use she, her pronouns. Um, I am a double Duke. I did my undergrad in international affairs and graduated in 2011. And then I went straight on to do my master's in public administration and got that degree in 2013. Um, I currently am a program manager at Cambium Assessment Incorporated, which is a testing assessment company for the K-12 environment. Wonderful. Thanks so much to our panelists. Um, so at this point, um, we're going to begin into some of our major and career related questions. Um, we have some questions prepared and we'll also leave time at the end for questions that you all would like to pose to the panelists. So as we go, feel free to add any questions that you have to the chat and then we'll get to them in that part two. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. Our first question um, is for the two students who are on, on our panel, Elizabeth and Spencer. Um, which resources have been most helpful to you as you've identified and pursued your professional interests? Sure, I can go ahead and start us off. Um, so I didn't mention this, but I have been a uh, student employee, student assistant at the University Career Center through all of college from day one um, until the day I graduate. Um, so I've had the opportunity to use a lot of different services that we've had as a part of my job and just out of personal interest. But I would say 
I think the most helpful things have been meeting one on one with our career advisors. Um, that's really helped me. I got a lot of personal advice, um, recommendations. I even got a GRE prep book um, uh, loaned from the library. Uh, so that was that was really great to have that one on one uh, time. I've also really enjoyed going to a couple of fairs that we have. We have a campus wide career fair that's really enjoyable. It's great even going as a freshman and sophomore, being able to practice your elevator pitch uh, and get to know what employers are looking for. And we also have a graduate school fair that I've been to that I really enjoyed um, because you can see the, the huge variety of, of uh, graduate schools that are recruiting at JMU uh, and get to know more of what they're looking for and what their programs look like. Um, the things that have been most helpful to me, especially as an education major, there's the Education Support Center um, that has helped me with all the tests that I need to take to become a teacher and have helped me with knowing which classes I'm going to take. And then also, shameless plug, but um, other fellow Madison advising peers, um, especially um, ones that have graduated and that were the same major as me, they've just really helped me in my um, process becoming a teacher. And then also obviously professors and your academic advisor, um, just get to know them and really talk to them and ask them questions because they're here to help you. Great advice. Thanks to both of you for sharing some of that. Um, our next question on the list, um, this really could be for anyone who's on the panel. Um, what is a light bulb moment? What was a moment for you that really contributed to your major or career decisions? Um, whether it was an experience, some organizational involvement, an internship, or just a moment in time, um, what really kind of provided that spark, that light bulb moment for you, major or career wise? Uh, I can speak to uh, part of that. I, I think I'm a, a living, breathing example of what you major in in undergrad does not necessarily determine what you're going to do with the rest of your life. Uh, you know, what, what drove me into a career in recruiting was my experience working with recruiters uh, and having, uh, you know, getting out of the Navy and working with placement agencies, having a really terrible experience, feeling left behind, feeling abandoned by the agency that was supposed to be helping me as a veteran get a job. Uh, and so I, I resigned myself to the, to the fact that nobody should have to go through that. So that's what really prompted me to get into the recruiting business uh, to, to help people find jobs. So, um, which had nothing to do with my degree. Uh, you know, as, as a recruiter and as an employer, I always look at undergrads, uh, unless you're majoring in something with the intent to move on to graduate studies in that field, you know, or, or improve your study a la accounting, medical school, those types of things. Um, you know, I look at undergrad as, as a great way to prove to an employer like me that you are capable of learning at a high level, that you retain concepts and information at, at, at a high level, and that to any employer, regardless of your major, you are a blank slate and a, and a sponge ready for, re, ready for knowledge and to learn and to be shaped and molded into however you can be fit into that organization. So. Thanks for sharing that, Mark. I think that really speaks to um, kind of the thing that we see a lot, which is a really wide variety of employers who are looking for all majors, because that really shows that you, just by virtue of going through the college experience and the critical thinking that you're developing there, that um, kind of the sky's the limit for what we can do in the future with that. Thanks. Any other fun light bulb moments that people have had? Sort of to uh, piggyback off of what Mark said, um, definitely what I'm doing now has really not much to do with what I majored during undergrad, which was international affairs. But my light bulb moment came for, um, or rather when I was uh, deciding to go to grad school because during undergrad, um, I was heavily involved with um, what at the time was called the Latino Student Alliance. And from there, um, we partnered with New Bridges Immigrant Resource Center um, in Harrisonburg often. And eventually that led to an internship there for me. And I just saw how being there um, in the whole nonprofit management world, um, I really felt like the skill set that I had um, would, would do well in that environment. So then um, 
when I was about to graduate and I was thinking about what to do next, um, I looked into the public administration uh, grad program rather at JMU and they did have a um, public and nonprofit management uh, area there. And, and that really was what drove me to go to that. That's wonderful, Kara. And, and sometimes we don't know what we don't know. So how did you, how did you identify that grad, grad program? Were you looking at all of the offerings from the school or how did you find that? Um, actually, one of my friends who I made as um, a connection through LSA, she uh, was a year older than me and she was in the MPA program. And really it's, it was other students in that program that were the biggest cheerleaders for the program and really, um, showed me that you know this is what I wanted to do plus also and I mean I'm sure the students there can understand I love JMU um, and the thought of being there for an extra two years I thought yes sign me up for that so that was just um, helped make the decision easier that makes total sense that's why many of us working in higher ed we just stay <laughs> Any other light bulb moments like Spencer or Elizabeth kind of as current students, um, any thoughts on kind of what led you to this place, major career and any moments that led to that? Yeah, I can speak on that. Um, I always knew that I wanted to work with kids. Uh, I just didn't know in which area. Um, and I thought I wanted to be a pediatrician, but then I realized I don't like science. Um, so, I took a class in high school called Teachers for Tomorrow to get a feel for what kind of what being a teacher was going to be like, obviously not fully a teacher, um, but I got the opportunity to go to elementary schools in my area and um, be a teacher assistant during that class. And so that was my light bulb moment that I, I knew that I wanted to be an elementary school teacher and just go back to school for the rest of my life. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to mention that I am, I have concentrations in both of my majors. So in um, history, I decided to do that. It's not mandatory, but I decided to add one um, when I was in an intro class uh, and it was called Intro to Public History, which is kind of this weird thing I hadn't heard about. Um, but we talked about on the first day of class, you know, a lot of people think about history class and they're really averse to it. They have a really negative reaction to history class because it think, they think about it as like memorizing dates and, you know, reciting information. Um, but when you ask people what they do when they go on vacation, a lot of times they're going to museums or historical sites or things that we would consider history. Um, and so I found that really fascinating and I started looking into it more and thinking more about, you know, people's perception of history and how we can make it engaging and tell more diverse stories and broader stories that resonate with people. Um, and so I decided to add that concentration. And I did a similar thing with my SMAD major um, where I was thinking about doing the advertising concentration, but I wasn't sure. I wanted to do something creative. Um, and I had a friend who was a computer science student um, and I knew that there was a concentration in SMAD that was sort of computer science. He had had some coding going on, but I was really intimidated uh, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to challenge myself. I wanted to do something I knew I could do easily. Um, and I knew that the interactive design and coding, all of that would be really tough. But I sat down with my friend while she was doing homework at one point and I looked at her homework and I said, I think I could, I think I could swing that. Um, and so I pushed myself and I took the intro class for that concentration. Uh, and I just absolutely loved it. So it was a little bit of, you know, exploring things that I found myself really drawn to that was a light bulb moment and also just being willing to challenge myself. Spencer, I'm glad that you mentioned um, two ideas about pushing yourself and also giving an intro class a try because those can be great ways to see, yeah, is this for me? Or if it's not, you know, I'll keep going through that process of, of trial and error. Um, you mentioned concentrations as well. And Chris, I wondered if you can speak to what concentrations are for folks that might not be familiar with that and whether every major has concentrations. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so depending on what major path you choose um, at JNU, uh, certain majors will have different options for students to more focus or concentrate their studies. So if you choose a major like, for example, history or anthropology or, or political science, um, many times 
you have the option to do a couple of different things within that major. So you might be able to choose a general, con a general concentration, which means that, okay, you might have 12 different political science classes that you have to complete in your major to graduate. Okay, so out of those 12, if you're choosing a general concentration, you can arrange those 12 in any way you want. You can look at the what's offered every semester and choose um, classes that appeal most to you until you hit that, that required 12 um, classes, and then you're done with your major requirements. Now, certainly you can go over that if you want, but usually, for example, like in political science, 12 is the minimum. Now, that's just a general concentration. You can do whatever you want. If you'd like more of a focused um, area of study, you maybe choose one a concentration if it's available. So maybe it's something like um, like you're looking at public administration um, or maybe international affairs or other majors. But within political science, you might be able to choose um, you know a state or local government concentration. So instead of choosing twelve random political science classes in the general concentration, you would have a list of six specific classes relating directly to that area, for example, like state and local government that you would complete during your time here at JMU, which would give you somewhat more of a focus in a certain area. Um, and then the other classes that you had left to finish out your major, the other six, you could again, you know, just choose what is most interesting to you. So it really depends on the different paths we, we, that you have within the major. Some majors do have concentrations and some majors don't. Thanks, Chris. That's a great explanation of that. Um, I know that's something that as a lot of times people are looking at declaring different majors, um, they're not always familiar with terms like concentration and whether they always have the option to do that or not. Um, even questions like, do I have to have a minor? Um, and minors, at least at JMU, are optional, um, but everybody declares a major in, in, during their second year. Um, wanted to also touch upon another question here for any of the panelists. Um, what advice would you give a student who is in the exploration stage of discerning their path right now? So path, we could be thinking about both major and career. So just any advice that you all would share with someone who's exploring those things right now? Uh, I, I would definitely say to don't be overly influenced by by outside forces, right? You need to do a lot of introspection and a lot of consideration of, of what you enjoy, what makes you happy, what makes you happy right now, uh, knowing full well that 10 years from now, that might not be the case. And that's okay. You don't have to, to decide what you're going to do with the rest of your life today, tomorrow, next year, or the year after. You have time. So, you know, take the time to explore, to experiment, to try different things, I, to, you know, try different internships in different fields. Uh, I didn't settle on a major until I was into my junior year. Um, cause I wanted to take every kind of class under the sun, you know, whether it was Egyptian archeology span or, you know, military history, or I was all over the place and that's okay. It's okay. Uh, and I think that's a, a message that too many people don't hear enough that you know, folks come in thinking they need to come in. I need to declare my major and I've got, I, I have to do this and I have to start paying off college loans when I graduate and, and slow down and enjoy it. And yeah, just you have time. Yeah, Mark is exactly right. Um, I got to work on a project over the summer for the University Career Center, looking at, you know, modern career development and what careers look like for students today. Um, and I learned so much, um, mostly that I think my perception of what a career looks like for folks is really limited, and it shouldn't be, that I, I have kind of a rigid view of, you know, working in a particular major, getting a job in that field and sticking with it. But as Mark said, you know, you've got to keep an open mind. The way the world works now, as we all know, things can be up in the air um, and we just don't, we have to remain flexible. And I think that's one of the more valuable skills you can get with uh, liberal arts education is the ability to use creative thinking skills um, and apply the skills that you're learning in any major and any degree uh, to a variety of different positions. 
Um, and I would also say to keep two things in mind. Uh, one of those is your values and your purpose. So what you see as um, the kind of short list of things that you truly value in life um, and what you see as your purpose. Um, and if you haven't identified that, that's part of what college is all about, is sitting down and figuring that out, um, taking a long time to think about that. The other thing is what you need right now. Um, so your basic needs. Uh, it's okay if you graduate and you get a job doing something you don't necessarily want to be doing as long as it meets your basic needs right now. Um, so those are the two things that I'll, I'll recommend to people um, if you're exploring is make sure you're getting what you need and make sure you're living for what you value, what makes you happy and where you find your purpose. Thanks, Spencer and Mark. Um, I think both of those are really great points. And, and just to echo some of those sentiments too, I think so many times in the Career Center, when we see students come in for career appointments, there is this belief that, you know, I need to pick what I'm doing for the rest of my life. And instead, hopefully what you all heard in the beginning, as everyone was sharing kind of what their undergraduate major was and where they are now, or where they might be going, that this does really change over time so much. And so the nice thing is that a lot of students feel a lot of pressure to choose a major, choose a career path. And the good news in this is that you only have to make one decision at a time. When you graduate, you will make a decision about what your first job is. You'll learn a lot um, in that line of work. You'll learn what you like and what you don't like that will help you make the decision for where your next role is and whether it's similar or different. And so I think that really helps a lot is just to know, I just have to make one decision after another, but it's not a decision where I'm locked in for my entire life. Yeah, and to lump onto that, I would also say, you know, during my time in advising and, and working with students and, and even today, just working in, in the recruitment industry, uh, be open-minded about what, what you think the opportunities you have are. Um, a, a lot of people think, you know, okay, so I am a computer science major. Okay, great, awesome. So where are you gonna work, right? I'm gonna work for big tech. Okay, well, some computer science majors get to work for big tech. Not all computer science majors get to work for big tech. Now, if I said to a computer science major, I've got a coding job or I've got a job for you at Ikea, they're gonna say, no, I don't wanna do that, that's retail. No, I'm telling you I have a coding job for Ikea corporate, right? So think open-minded and broadly about your field of interest and what you like to do. A lot of times what you enjoy doing, I mean, the, the, in my opinion, the key to, to career success and, and success in life is to find what you're good at and what you enjoy and make them do that. That's the key. Mm -hmm. uh, and so many times what people are good at and what they would enjoy doing, they think that they can't find a career in. You can't, it's there. You just gotta find it. Great advice. From some of our other panelists, um, any other thoughts that you all would have for students that are kind of in the exploration stage right now? One thing that really helped me um, after I graduated uh, from grad school, because I, I really wasn't sure um, what direction I wanted to go in at the time was that um, I got hooked in uh, with a couple different temp agencies um, in my area. Um, I live in Northern Virginia, so up here in the DC area, there were a ton of them. And it was really interesting to get or to have exposure to different industries. Because um, when you do sign up with a temp agency, um, of course, you know, they look at your resume, your background, um, but they're really good with figuring out transferable skills. Um, and so some industries maybe that I wouldn't have thought of to look into um, the the folks at the temp agency said, no, no, we think you'd be great at it. Um, so from that, I was able to get, you know, some really long-term assignments and exposure to different types of work, um, which really helped me kind of figure out what path I wanted to go because yeah, it's great to find a job that you like and, and, you know, or, um, work that you like, but then it's also in a way kind of good to see what you don't like. So then that kind of helps narrow the field um, and hone in on where you really want to go, um, at least in your, in your next move. 
I love that advice of a, of a temp agency because a lot of times we talk about, you know, either internships or shadowing um, in a job to see if you like it. Um, but the temp agencies too are an amazing way of doing that because they're also kind of trying to match people with organizations. So then you have some help along the way with where you might wanna have that experience where you're learning what you like and don't like. So great advice. Mine would be to really get to know your peers and talk to them about what they like, because if you're unsure of what you want to do, then I think just talking to your friends and um, people in your classes about what their, their major is and what they like to do, and what classes they need to take. Personally, I just think connections and talking to people is the best way to kind of figure out what you might want to do in the future. Yeah, a lot of times you'd be amazed too, kind of what um, knowledge or connections your friends might have. So if you mention kind of, oh, I'm interested in this, then that might be their minor, or that might be a career field that they're, you know, they have a family member in. Um, and so the more folks you can share your questions with and what you're trying to figure out, yeah, you'd be amazed um, what kind of wisdom that can bring. All right, um, so it sounds like we um, we got to share a lot of great ideas about kind of for students in this exploration stage. Um, Chris, there's also a question here in the chat about the process for changing majors. Do you want to speak to that? What somebody might need to do if they're at a place where they want to go ahead and change majors? Yeah, sure. Um, depending on where, where you are, certainly um, you know, if you're finding that it's not for you or, or maybe that your, your, your interests have changed or you find, found a, an academic path that's lined up more with your values, uh, many times students will be referred to our office, um, University Advising, to, you know, talk about what the next steps are, what options they have, if, if they change from one major to another, um, how does that affect, you know, their plans for graduation, um, and other concerns too. So, you know, if, if you're having those questions about, you know, I'm thinking going in another direction or, or maybe changing what my path is, um, you know, that's what university advising is here for to assist students in making that, that decision. Um, certainly it's not uncommon um, for students, you know, like we've talked about already in, in this panel and some of the answers we've had from our panelists, um, students make that change all the time. You know, it's not uncommon for, for a student to go, you know, from one major to the next um, during their their first or even second year, I mean, I think a lot of it depends on, you know, how that major matches up with, you know, what's important to you, what what you feel valued at, and um, you know, potentially as you explore more of the careers available to that academic path, does those also line up with um, what your values and interests are, and and excite you about, you know, potential um, career options for the future. Thanks, Chris. Um, Amy, who's one of our advisors, also put in the chat um, that the process for changing your major is going to go through My Madison. Um, some students find the process in My Madison to be a little confusing. Um, in terms of the pull down menus and how you need to select some of those items. But the tutorial um, that's linked here in the chat really takes you through that. Um, and also, if you wanted to talk more um, about majors, then there's also a link that Amy has shared there um, that we'll also share kind of at the end of, of the presentation today for how you can have an appointment um, or come to some walk in hours with one of the university advising staff members too. One thing I would also recommend, um, I'm teaching a couple of freshman sections of a class that I'm using to help get freshmen acclimated to college. But one thing that I'm recommending to students who are unsure about their major is to start by taking gen general education classes um, and take classes that you think would apply to potential majors that you're interested in so that you aren't behind if you end up changing your major uh, or you change your mind about the direction you want to head. Um, go ahead and get general requirements out of the way up front. That way you can start doing things you really enjoy uh, in your last couple years of college. Great thoughts on that, Spencer. 
I'm, I'm curious too, because the question about changing majors came up, um, anyone here on the panel, has anyone had the experience of changing majors, um, changing your mind about your major and, and what prompted that change? I did. Uh, <laughs> I went in, I, I was one of those people, I went into college thinking I knew exactly what I wanted to be. I was, I was going to go be a marine biologist. I, you know, did, signed up for bio in the lab my freshman year and dropped the lab and realized I was not going to be a biology major. So, you know, but these, but that stuff happens, you know, who you are at 17 or 18 years old is not who you're going to be at 20, 21, 22, 25, 30, it, it all changes. It's all, it, it's all on that spectrum of change. So that's why I, I always go back to, um, you know, and people have said it, be flexible and, and do what makes you happy. If you go with that, you're likely to succeed. Yeah, I know for myself, um, I um, was an English major and I stayed an English major all four years, but I did change my mind um, for graduate school. So that was a counseling psychology program because I was an English major thinking that I was going to be a high school English teacher. And I started going through some of the student teaching process and realized that I was really enjoying my work in the career center um, at my undergrad and that I wanted to work in higher education instead. So just know too that sometimes your change, um, change of heart, change of mind might happen during the four years of college. It might also happen after. And a lot of times people think that if you're going to go on to grad school, it has to be in the same field as what you studied in undergrad. And that's not necessarily the case. Um, sometimes if it's a medical or a health sort of program, there might be some prerequisite courses that the program would ask you to take before starting a master's. Um, but in many cases, you can start right into a graduate program that's different from what you studied in undergrad. So that gives you a lot of flexibility too, to be able to kind of pivot at that point as well. Anyone else want to share any fun change of major stories or what might have brought that on for you? I mean, I had a similar experience as Mark did um, coming into to college as a first year student. You know, I tried to or gravitated towards, you know, what I enjoyed in high school, which was um, biology too. So I said, well, you know, I'm good at that in high school. So obviously I'll be just as good as it in college because, you know, everything matches up so easily. So I, I declared that and, you know, being first generation, you know, my thought of college was, you know, when you declare your major, it's not like high school, you just pretty much study biology, right? You know, I don't have to do a whole lot more besides that. I'll just be doing that for four years. So I, I get into my first semester and um, the biology was fine, but, you know, they told me, guess what? You have to take two years of chemistry. And I was like, well, I'm not so good at that part. Um, so once I realized how deep I had to go um, with the other sciences, I was just like, okay, this, is, this isn't this is going to work. I could have <laughs> handled all that biology work, but on the chemistry on top just kind of made me change direction. So <clears throat> I went undeclared for a, a little while um, in my first year after my fall semester. Um, then I ultimately found myself in um, drawn to more liberal arts areas like political science, and that's where I, I finished, finished my undergrad degree. Yeah, Chris, what you shared is definitely something that we'll hear from students a lot um, in the Career Center. I'm sure also in university advising too. this um, thing that happens sometimes where you reach a certain point in a major and some of the classes are just not what you expected or really challenging. And sometimes there's a way to kind of push through that by using some of the um, kind of academic support services that are here on campus. But sometimes it's kind of a moment of truth to say, okay, is this, um, is this something that I really want to pursue um, and I'm gonna push through this? Or does this mean that I'm more interested in pursuing something else? So we see that happen with a lot of students kind of midway through a major. There's another question here in the chat. Um, 
If I have no idea what a good career path for me would be, how can I narrow things down? And this is something where, you know, we heard earlier about being kind of undecided or undeclared as a major. You can also have that same sort of um, phenomenon with career path where you might not even know where to begin. Um, we do have a page of our website, um, so jmu.edu slash cap, and there's a major and career exploration um, kind of navigation over on the side. And when we talk about where do you begin when you're trying to narrow things down, it kind of depends on your style too. Would you rather talk to people um, who are doing some things that are potentially of interest? Would you rather do research? Um, but either way, you need a place to start because majors at JMU are finite. We have a set number of them, but there are kind of an infinite number of careers. So for that, there is a tool called Focus um, that is a place where you can do some self-assessments, just answering questions about your preferences, learning more about your personality, your skills, your interests, your values, and then it begins to suggest what some of the patterns are for some careers that might be of interest to kind of look into. And that really helps kind of give a starting point for narrowing things down. Then you can decide, okay, with my personal style, I wanna to talk to people next, or I wanna research um, some of these career fields and all of those links and resources are kind of linked from that hub on the website as well. Looks like we're getting lots of questions in the chat. Um, I heard a panelist mention talking to people in majors or careers of interest. How do I go about actually finding someone to talk with? So that is something called informational interviewing um, that we recommend to students. And that could be either faculty and a major um, that might be of interest. It could be people working in a career field that you might connect with and maybe you would find them on LinkedIn. Um, has anyone here on the panel ever done an informational interview or have any advice on reaching out to people in majors or careers you're thinking about? Uh, I mean, I've given an informational interview. Uh, you oh, know, I mean, it, 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 as a recruiter, I get requests often. Uh, and a lot of times it's people just interested in you know, the company or a particular job, or maybe I don't want to throw my hat or into the ring, or I, you know, there's not anything there now, but I'd like to be interested in future opportunities. Uh, at any rate, the moral of my story here is, is networking, networking, networking. It's all about the LinkedIn. Um, you know, it's a little bit like Facebook for jobs, uh, and it is getting that way now. Um, and and I, I hope it, you know, some changes come, but take advantage of your network, uh, expand as much as you can, grow as much as you can, uh, and don't be afraid to ask for things. Uh, that's that's the big thing. Um, you know, chances are you probably know people that you don't even realize you're you're attached to uh, or connected to in some way that can really help you and get you somewhere. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah, I, I would say I've done a lot of informational interviewing. I think I started that really like way too early. I think I was probably a sophomore in high school and I was like, what do I want to do with my life? Where do I want to go? Who do I want to be? Um, and so I started um, really just with cold, like cold calls, I think you hear, but I was doing cold emails um, where I said, I think I want to do something that's creative. So let me reach out to a bunch of different organizations that do that, mostly advertising agencies, and then maybe a couple, I, I am from Richmond, so maybe a couple of programs at VCU, and I'll, I'll just send some emails and see what people think. Um, and a lot of times people are really, really willing to talk about what they do, how they got to where they are, uh, and they're just really willing to help sit down and talk with you. I actually found somebody um, at a local advertising agency who was a JMU alum, uh, and she sat down with me three or four years in a row um, and just talked to me about her career, how it's progressed, how she got where she is, what the JMU degree meant to her. Um, and it not only pushed me to come here, but it pushed me to think, you know, what can I do with what I'm interested in? Um, and it, it was immensely helpful. So I would really recommend, you know, I, I found, I got in contact with her literally based on finding her email on the website and just sending her an email, no idea who she was. Um, and then we establish that professional connection. And, you know, like Mark said, it's it's a huge, huge part of getting jobs. 
um, and getting where you want to be is establishing those professional connections, whether that be with, you know, your own friends, um, your parents' friends, or even your parents. I mean, think, think really broadly about what that can look like. And, and it can be one of the most helpful things when you're, when you're trying to find somewhere to plug in. Yeah, I think that's great advice, Spencer. And, and I know too, we'll often hear um, from a number of students just that the idea of reaching out um, to people that they don't know can be intimidating or overwhelming even. And so it's great that you pointed out just that a lot of times it's a really friendly reception um, that you receive when you're reaching out to someone. And you know, if you're using LinkedIn, for example, to reach out to JMU alumni, um, you know, people really remember when they were um, kind of in their four years of college and are really dedicated and interested for the most part in kind of helping current students too. So even, even if it's a connection kind of outside of the JMU community, um, a lot of times people are just really interested in kind of talking about their own career path or how they got to a place. And so even if you feel like, well, I don't know what I have to offer this person in return, that's usually not what it's about. Um, it can just be something where you reach out to people, you see who responds, and the people that do respond are often very kind of friendly and welcoming, which takes kind of the intimidation factor out of it too. Um, I will say as a recruiter and, and an employer that there is a knack to that. And, and mm -hmm. there is absolutely a skill to, especially on LinkedIn, if you are a LinkedIn regular user, you're not paying for LinkedIn premium or any of, there is a skill to reaching out to people that you're not connected to with already. You or to, yeah, you have limited characters in your message, in your invite that you can use. Um, and, I, and I agree with Chandra that you don't have, it's not about what necessarily you can give them in return, right? Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, it doesn't hurt to give, a, it, and it doesn't cost you a thing to give a little stroke to the ego, because that helps. If you're see, reaching out to somebody that is alum, an alum from your university or somebody you don't even know, but you say, hey, I noticed you have experience, you have really impressive experience in this field, and I'm a student, and I'm telling you, everybody likes to feel good about themselves. Everybody likes to have that ego stroke, and that is the first thing that somebody's gonna go, oh, that's great, they, I would love to talk to you and answer your questions then it becomes more of a, I'm happy that you reached out to me. You made me feel good. I can turn around and do that favor for you now. Yes, excellent point about kind of the psychology of, of getting through with your messages too. There's, I wanted to bring in too, there was a great question in here um, in the chat that is basically kind of getting into the idea of which comes first, this decision of a career or the choice of a major. Um, and the question in here was a great one about, you know, should I really kind of focus on, if I'm undecided, should I focus on what is kind of all the way at the end of this tunnel where, you know, what's the career that's my end goal, and then identify a major um, that would help me reach that point? Or should I start this decision making process from the point of view of what do I want to major in? And that's an amazing question. Um, I think that's something that a lot of, um, and you're not alone, a lot of current students um, bring those questions to us in university advising and the Career Center every day. One of the things to think about is when we're thinking about, you know, kind of which majors might prepare us well for a certain career, a lot of times it's not that linear, um, except for some fields where a lot of times, you know, a nursing major would go into a nursing profession, accounting might go into accounting. It doesn't have to be, but a lot of times that's the preparation that someone might have for that. But otherwise, if we just had a career in mind, um, like consulting or law, um, or um, even kind of, you know, something that's more specific, like a physical therapist, um, then there isn't always a straight answer for which major would prepare us best to get into that. Um, so I guess I would go back to something that I said earlier about just making one decision at a time. And the four years that you're gonna spend um, here at JMU, you really hopefully um, will love and enjoy so much what you're studying and that kind of passion for what you're learning will also kind of open new doors for things that you're learning about, reading about, researching, 
um, also pursuing maybe internships or, or summer experiences that might help you discover a career path that isn't even kind of on your radar right now. But that's just one way of going about it. Um, I know some, you know, everybody processes decision making differently. So some people really want to have kind of that end goal in mind that they're working towards so that when they go through that really tough chemistry class, like Chris was mentioning earlier, that they know that it's worth it because they are going to med school and they are going to be this kind of doctor. And so that's something that really gets them through that. Um, I don't know if anybody else here on the panel wants to kind of speak to this, what comes first, the major or the career decision? Yeah, I'll say um, that I am notoriously really, really bad at making decisions uh, efficiently. I'm the person that like stands in the line at Chipotle and is like, what if I regret the burrito? Maybe I should do the bowl instead. And I'll stand there for like 10 minutes and my friend's like, you've, you've gotten the same thing every single time you've come here. Um, but that's, it's notoriously overwhelming. And I think if you're looking at careers, it's even worse because you're not looking at a menu of seven items. You're looking at almost literally infinite possibilities. Um, and so what I did intentionally was pick two majors, uh, that give me different kinds of experience, but that can be used in a lot of broad different ways, but that I both really enjoy. Um, so I started taking history classes, number one, to fulfill gen eds, and I remembered liking history in high school, and I was like, I might as well, and like I mentioned earlier, I got into that kind of intro class, and I was like, oh, this is very interesting. I have a lot of questions that I want answered, and that's a huge thing, is find uh, a program where you have questions that you want to answer, because that's what you're going to be doing a lot of. Um, and I also found the, the SMAD program, which is the School of Media Arts and Design, um, and they are pretty much giving me a, a wide breadth of experience in things like audiovisual production, um, so videos and, and podcasts and that kind of thing. And I was like, this is very cool, like learning about media, um, because in a lot of ways that's super relevant um, as a career and it can apply to a lot of different fields. So what I've done basically is given myself a breadth of skills that I could apply to virtually you know, any job. And I think that applies to a lot of different majors, whether it's political science, English, or even something like, you know, majoring in something specific like chemistry, you can take it in a lot of directions. Um, so if you aren't sure, that is okay, because it is, uh, there's this decision paralysis that happens, and it's totally fine to be caught there. Pick something that you enjoy, um, that you don't feel exhausted after class, but you're actually looking forward to going to class the next day. Um, Pick something that gives you that kind of energy. Take those classes. If they line up, they line up. If you need to create your own major, you need to create your own major. We have um, some really good resources available uh, to help you do that. But make sure that you're in something that's not, you know, uh, burning you out. Um, something that you have that, like Chandra said, that, that drive to continue. Also, Along with that, sorry. <laughs> um, also along with that, I know I'm the kind of person, I just have a lot of interests. And so I was really overwhelmed because I was like, well, I want to be a teacher. So I do like for teaching, I do have to major in a specific area. Um, but I was like, but what if I, I like Spanish too. And I think that's why there's minors and all these other things such as concentrations that if you have multiple interests, you don't have to major in all of them because that's just not possible but that's why there's minors and then even when you're in clubs there's teams for clubs like social media um advertising like if you just want to get experience with any of that like join clubs that will allow you to do that uh, elizabeth and spencer i love you know kind of this way that you're describing of diversifying ways that you can kind of meet the variety of interests that you might have. So through other majors, minors, involvement. Um, I'm curious too, so that kind of describes for folks how they can kind of diversify beyond their major. Um, Kara, Mark, Chris, um, have a question for you all as well about once you're in a career, um, are there ways that you all have found where you have interests um, that are being met kind of outside of your, of your day job too? Other ways that you all are kind of meeting the needs of your diverse interests kind of beyond your work too? I can definitely speak to that. So I am, you know, you talk, people talk about being right brain, left brain. I'm all over the map, right? So I, 
my thing is I love people. So I do recruiting, but that still doesn't get everything for me. I'm extremely artistic and creative. I'm use, I, I've got a musical background. I can't do that at work. Uh, so, you know, I think work-life balance and, and, and being able to, um, you know, recognize that your job is going to make you hopefully to some degree happy and that you'll be comfortable with that, but also know that there's probably not going to be a job out there that's going to satisfy every one of your needs. Uh, for me, I do theater on the side. It gives me an opportunity after work to go be somebody else for a couple of hours a night, you know, and it's a way, you know, I play sports and I do a, a, a wide variety of things. Uh, but, you know, once you leave college and once you leave university and you're out into the real world and, and working and there's so many options, there's so many things to get involved in and, and groups and of course, post post COVID world, hopefully these things come back. Uh, but there's so many things to get involved with. Highly encourage you to do that, uh, to, to fill whatever gaps you have. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, for sure. And just to echo what Mark was saying with the whole work-life balance um, thing, I, uh, I, I wouldn't want everything that I love to be in my job because um, you definitely um, when you're working, I, I mean, even now it seems like we're working even longer hours because we're at home. So there's no commute time. And, you know, if I need to answer an email at 7 a.m., oh, hey, I can do that now. Um, but you definitely want to create those boundaries where, um, you know, it's great if you're fulfilled in your career, but there's still going to be things that you want to do that will be outside of your career. And sometimes it's kind of nice to, you know, protect that in a way and keep it separate just so you can have you know, those two different um, compartments of, okay, this is what I'm doing, um, you know, my nine to five or whatever. And then here's my outlet. Um, and, and that kind of also helps keep whatever you do um, as your outlet fun. Because once you have to start doing something, like you have to do it, um, even if you really enjoy it, sometimes that can kind of burn you out a little bit. Um, so it, it's nice when you do have that balance. Yeah, definitely a great thing to remember. <laughs> it looks like we're, um, we're getting close to the end of our time together. Um, so I just wanted to kind of leave um, the last five to seven minutes or so, um, just to see if there were any other kind of final pieces of advice um, that y'all might have for um, students who are making major or career decisions um, or alumni who are making career decisions. Um, just any other advice with major and career decisions that you think might be helpful? I, I would just say, again, I think the whole theme of my, my afternoon seems to have been do what makes you happy and don't feel the pressure uh, to do something that doesn't. Um, you know, I think a lot of folks, if, if they're uh, lucky enough to have a lot of financial aid and not graduate with a lot of college debt, that's fantastic. But if you're graduating with college debt, it's gonna be there, right? Don't feel this pressure to, oh my gosh, I have to pay it off right away. Don't sacrifice your happiness. Um, so take the time, explore, you know, do, do the discernment, figure out what works for you, what, what makes you tick, what makes you happy, uh, and don't get pressured into doing something you don't wanna do. Great advice. Because I put everyone on the spot with this question too, I can buy you some more time um, sharing one other kind of idea as well, which is related to something we said earlier, which is um, to stay open um, to possibilities. And I know one thing that we'll hear a lot kind of as students come in and they're trying to kind of choose a career um, with their major and there's only kind of the most common things that they know about, like, I don't think I can be an English major or history major because I don't wanna teach. And the reality is that there are so many options, so many things that people can do with any major. Um, but a lot of times we need to know what those other things are because we only know what we've experienced before. So there's an amazing resource linked um, from the CAP website called the Career Guide to JMU Majors. And that shows you recent graduates, um, all the different kind of things that people have gone into and links so that you can explore some of those things too, so that you can kind of see, here's all of the kind of breadth and depth of things that I can do with this major. And it's not just the one profession that I knew about. 
Yeah, that's great. I, I really have appreciated having that resource, knowing that I'm in a major that is traditionally thought of as, you know, history. You think, well, you're going to be a history teacher or you'll be a professor or something along those lines. And I really don't want to go down any of those paths, but I know for a fact that I have other options. Um, and that would have been, I think, hard to realize if I didn't know. Um, but yeah, I would say, number one, talk to everybody that you can possibly talk to. It can be really intimidating at first. I know I struggle with anxiety and I know a lot of people do. Um, and it can be really tough in social situations. But remember that more often than not, people, like Mark said, enjoy uh, talking about themselves and enjoy feeling good about themselves um, and that you can do that for them. Uh, and you don't have to offer anything in return. It's You can make people feel good because they know they helped you. Um, so talk with people, uh, engage with people about what they do uh, and learn more that way, whether that's professors or friends. Um, and then, yeah, be open, um, keep an open mind. Um, I'm thinking of something else and I'll, I'll mention it if I, if I remember, but yeah, I think what's, what's helped me more than anything is trying not to you know pigeonhole myself into a particular program or feel like I have to do something in particular with what I'm studying. Um, if you see somebody in the world and you think, oh, they have a really cool job, or I really like the way that they're talking um, and the things that they're talking about, try to try to find out what they're doing. I got an internship my sophomore year because we had a guest speaker in one of my classes. And I said, you know, you're really passionate about this. Um, what is it all about? And he said, well, do you want to join the team? And I you know, I wasn't doing anything else. You might as well see if you like it, see if you don't like it. Um, and I've been working on that for, for two or three years now. Um, but yeah, if you can find people and you think you have a really cool job um, or you're doing something and I would love to do that, um, see if you can just, you know, chat with them about it. Uh, see what it takes for, for them to get where they are and how you can get where they are. And people are generally really receptive and, and generally friendly. Any other final words of wisdom? Wanted to give folks a chance. All right, so um, we're gonna go ahead, um, our final slide um, just shows some additional information about if you have questions after today, um, how can you reach out? Either to university advising for major related questions or the University Career Center for career related questions. So the email addresses for each department are listed here. And then we've also, um, we also kind of cross-reference one another a lot. We make referrals to one another a lot. Um, so with your phone, um, you can actually scan this QR code with your camera if you'd like. It brings you right to this web link. Um, so you can also just go there in your browser. But if you go to jmu.edu slash cap slash appointment, it tells you whether you wanted to make an appointment with academic advisors or with career advisors, um, how you can go about doing that. But more than anything, we want you all to know that you're not in this alone. Um, there are people on campus who can help, um, not only in university advising and university career center, but we've also talked a lot too about how fellow students, um, alumni, your professors, other staff members at JMU, um, this is a really great network. So definitely use your village for this decision making um, that you have at hand here. We're happy to help. Um, but yeah, just reach out if there are any other questions that you have. Um, the Madison Advising Peers, which is a group that Elizabeth is representing today. Um, Amy has put in the chat, um, again, kind of a, a URL where you can find more information about meeting with them. They're fellow JMU students who have a lot of great academic advising expertise. All right, well, I just wanted to thank all of the panelists for joining us here today. Um, thank you too to Tracy Kite from Family Relations for uh, the idea of these Family Friday events. And we hope everyone has a wonderful weekend.